Hi friends, Catherine Korostoff here, and today I'd like to talk about data visualization for our market researchers. Now in market research, we have a very specific thing that we are always concerned about, making sure that people actually use these wonderful research results. So you've just spent weeks or maybe even months preparing a huge study, you deliver it, but will people use it? Well, they'll use it if they truly understand it and if they retain it. And Understanding is important because, well, obviously it's important, but if people are going to trust our results enough that they're actually going to make actual real world business decisions, actual investments, changes in processes, they really have to be comfortable that they understand the information. So comprehension and retention are both really important. So how can we as market research professionals make sure that people will comprehend and retain our results. Well, there are a few different tactics that we use, but data visualization is absolutely one of them. Data visualization can be a very powerful tool to both improve comprehension as well as retention. And you see this a lot in research reports. You will see a lot of charts and graphs. So that's great. So we know we can use data visualizations for charts and graphs um, in the form of charts and graphs to do a great job of conveying our research results, to do a great job of summarizing the research results. But what about the so what findings? So one of the things we know in market research is we don't just wanna do a data dump. We know that we need to make sure that in our research deliverables, that we have opportunities to really synthesize those results that are the key takeaways. If somebody is going to get your research report and only retain three or four things, what are those three or four things? And that's not gonna be something like X percent of customers perceive us as family friendly. That's not really what I mean by a key takeaway or a so what finding. What I'm talking about here are those really key conclusions that we like to see in our executive summaries that synthesize the results. All right, so that sounds good, right? But can we also use data visualization to help with that? I would say yes. So here at Research Rockstar, of course, uh, we do have a course on data visualization and one on infographics. And so you know that I'm enthusiastic about data visualization, but I also got to recently co-host a webinar with uh, the folks over at Display R, um, and my co-presenter for this was the wonderful Darren Jackson, who has a great deal of expertise in using data visualization to tell stories from your survey data. Um, so what I'd like to do is share with you just a couple of the highlights and in the show notes, I'll give you the link so that you can watch the whole webinar at a later time if you should so wish. So that will be in the show notes. So again, this was a, a webinar co-hosted by myself uh, recently and Darren from Display R. Um, so one of the things that Darren talks about in his work in, in, in providing ways for people to, re to uh, rethink how they do their data visualizations is he does embrace pictographs. Now, he wasn't saying that everything that was a bar chart needs to be a pictograph, but he does make a good point, and he displayed it in this example, that it really can add um, a little bit of not only visual interest, but it also helps to amplify the story. If we're talking about how many, um, for people who drink different types of soda, what, how many of those sodas do they drink per day? The, on the left-hand side, we've got a simple bar chart. Okay, that shows me the data. But with the pictograph, and we actually see it in glasses, it really does seem to amplify that story much better than just a simple bar. So. He's encouraging us to think about when we can use pictographs to really make the story in the bar chart more intuitive, more at a glance, if you will. Here's another example that he shared that I really liked. Again, another way of using a pictograph. In this case, instead of talking about how many Coca-Cola drinks a particular um, segment drinks per day, um, this particular segment drinks 12.5 Coca-Cola drinks per day, but check out the way that he's using the pictograph to display it. A little bit interesting, uh, but still extremely intuitive and very easy to understand. And, you know, I know that a lot of us in market research, we, we're not graphic designers. 
And I, I never want to say to somebody, you need as a market researcher to be a graphic designer. But the thing is, is that pictographs are increasingly easy to create even without being a graphic designer. Um, some of the different data visualization tools, including DisplayR, um, as well as some of the tools that you can use for, um, for data visualization templates um, like Canva, or Vengage allow you to work with pictographs in a really easy way. So even if you're not a graphic designer, it's definitely within your um, uh, skill set. You know, you don't you don't have to be a graphic designer. So um, so that's the good news about pictographs. Now in Darren's section of the webinar, he shared a lot of different types of visuals. I'm just going to share one more um, that I really liked, um, which is um, a bump chart. And this particular one is based on um, some religious data looking at the distributions of religions from 2002 to 2014. Um, but what I really like about this for me as a market researcher is I've definitely done a lot of projects where I've done trending. Many market research folks, we do trending or tracking studies. Maybe it's not on an annual basis, maybe it's quarterly or monthly, but the idea here that I really like is showing how something, in this case religion, is changing over time. And a lot of times in market research reports, we'll see that as a line chart. Now, I love my line charts. Line charts can be great. But I do think that this is a bit more intuitive. For example, if I was doing a market share study um, and I wanted to look at how the top competitors were changing in terms of their rank of market share or their rank in terms of customer satisfaction scores. I really like this bump chart because it really shows where things are switching off in a very intuitive way. I immediately get to see that there's some changes going on in some of these rows so that I can quickly identify, hey, what's consistent, what's not changing, and what is changing that potentially could be of interest. All right, so I don't want to steal any more of Darren's thunder because he has some really wonderful examples in the recording from the webinar. And again, I'll put that in the show notes for you. So he talked about updating how we deliver, um, updating how we visualize survey research results. Then I came in to talk about, now, in addition to that, can we update how we convey our so what findings? And one of the things is if you are going to use data visualization to help amp up how you convey and make memorable your key findings, we have to make that sure that that data visualization isn't just a, a throwaway. We've all seen, for example, PowerPoint presentations where there's a, a diagram that feels a little too forced or some stock photography that feels like it's a little too randomly thrown in. We don't wanna do that. If we're gonna be using data visualization to help convey so what results, we have to have some criteria for what would make this an effective data visualization for conveying so what results? You know, would this be something that would be executive summary worthy, for example? And so in reflecting on this, I think that there's really three criteria. So if I'm going to use a data visualization for a so what story, I want to make sure that it either conveys some concise synthesis, that is, it's taking what might be a complex story and really making it super concise and well synthesized. Um, it has to be something that conveys credibility. So, you know, that's another criteria. I want to make sure that I'm conveying this complex story or that I'm conveying my so what in a way that's super concise and perceived as credible. And I also want to do it in a way that is going to simplify the actionability of my research. Now, I know a lot of us, when we hear actionability of research, the word actionability or actionable does get overused. I totally appreciate that. But here I do like it. And the reason why is because if I'm conveying my key findings from my research, I want to make it easy for my reader to see how they can use those results. What are the specific actions that they can take? Is there something from these results that's going to help them make money? Is it going to help them save money? Is it going to do something else for them? So I want the visuals to help my client, my reader, get that takeaway, that they can see how they can use the results. So I'm just going to show a couple of the examples that I showed in the webinar, and hopefully this will be good food for thought. And a couple of these might look familiar to you if you're a Research Rockstar student, because some of these are in our data visualization course. So one thing I like for concise synthesis is simple frameworks. Now here we have a framework called Start, Stop, Continue. 
And if you have an MBA or worked with any management consulting firms at any time in your life, uh, this will probably look familiar. The start stop continue model is a very common framework that's very familiar to business people. Um, the good news is that means that if you are delivering your research results to a business executive, a chief marketing officer, the CEO, other top executives, they'll have been familiar with this framework. So I know to us, it might look really simple, but that's the beauty of it. In this case, what we're doing is we're saying, we're going to take the key results from this research, the things that were the most powerful results that were most tightly aligned with our stated project objectives, and we're going to put them into buckets based on what their implications are. So here we've got certain things the company should start doing, certain things the company should stop doing, and things they should continue doing. Again, a very simple model, but simply by mapping some of the key results into those three categories, we're making it easier for somebody to see, oh, I can see what the actions are that I can take with this research result, with these research results. So it really speaks to not only leveraging their existing knowledge of the framework, which makes people happy, right? People like to use things they already know, um, but it also shows them what the actions are that could potentially be taken. So that makes it powerful. Another part of conveying synthesis for us sometimes is that sometimes in research, we're working on really complex projects. And um, you might be doing, for example, a survey project that has a few really important hypotheses that you're trying to test. And so now you wanna convey that and you wanna show how you are taking that complex information and really creating a logical set of conclusions. Well, part of the synthesis can actually come from diagramming those results. And this is something I really find to be a very effective technique. And I've had many research rockstar students put this to use to wonderful benefit for them. And here, what I'm saying is we can create diagrams that show the reader how we drew our conclusions. So if we've got a project that has a stated objective on the left, it may have three or four hypotheses, right? If we're doing survey research, we often have hypotheses. Uh, we have a hypothesis that interest in feature X varies by household income, or we have a hypothesis that target market Y is um, increasingly price sensitive, um, or we have a hypothesis that our customers are not renewing their subscriptions as much as we thought they would because of issue X. So whatever the hypotheses are, but with a simple diagram like this, we have the opportunity to tell our reader right up front, hey, remember these were the object, this was the key objective, these were the hypotheses, and by the way, these were the results. Now here I'm pretending there's going to be exactly two results per hypothesis that may or may not be the case. You might have more data points that that address a specific hypothesis. Um, but in reality, probably not many more than two, right? So if we take that exercise, not only are we showing our, our client that we have a very credible path, but we can really make sure that they understand that that's how we drew our conclusions. One thing that I do often hear from executives is that when they get research reports, especially if they're getting a research report from a team or a researcher they haven't worked with a lot in the past, it's not always obvious to them how they came up with those key takeaways, those key conclusions. Ouch, right? We shouldn't be making it hard for people, but there is a little bit of skepticism when they're working with a new researcher. Is this researcher making a very logical conclusion? Is, there, is the data actually supporting their conclusions? And they don't want to have to spot check for that. They want you to make it easy. And in this case, I'm able to actually say, hey, here's our conclusions. And by the way, here's how we got there. We had an objective. We had hypotheses. These were the results. This is the conclusion. It ensures critical thinking on our part. And it does give the client that confidence, that credibility, that the way that the analysis and interpretation was done was really great. I also want to point out on a on another totally different way of, of using data visualization to convey um, the so what results is that pictures can be great, right? Because data visualization isn't just charts and graphs and diagrams, it's also illustrations and pictures. So here's an example from um, a template that we include um, 
if you've taken our, any of our report writing courses, this is in the free PowerPoint template that we give out with that course, with those courses. Um, but something like this can be super effective. For example, if you are doing a study in our, hypothet our hypothetical case here, where there's a really important story about how maybe brand behaviors or product usage varies by household size, use a picture. We have a tendency to default to bar charts, but in this simple template, you can see that we've got a one person household up to a four person household in our hypothetical case study, and we still have a little real estate on the slide to put in the key findings. All right, what was the thing that varied by household size? I've got plenty of space here to be able to add that in, and it's going to really help amplify the story as compared to a bar chart. Anyway, those are a few examples I wanted to share with you. Um, again, I do encourage you to watch the recording of the full webinar. I really enjoyed getting to work with Darren. He has so many really cool data visualizations. You really have to check out the palm tree visualization at the end of the webinar recording. That one was new to me, so I really enjoyed seeing that. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, please post them here on either YouTube or on iTunes. And um, there is also an article that's about the webinar that we did. So if you're interested in the article, do check it out at researchrockstar.com slash blog. And as always, if these conversations are useful to you, uh, please do like and subscribe and share with your colleagues. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.